noticed that several of you have started going back and watching videos from my Christmas series last year and even the year before that. So that must mean that some of you are starting on your Christmas cards and that kind of inspired me. I know that I had fun starting early last year. I got to make all of my Christmas cards. And so I decided I would jump into doing a few cards um, starting now here in in July and share those with you and and maybe we'll get a little jump start on them. The one today is one that really would be super easy to do um, almost assembly line style and the thing that makes it really cool is this inlaid and raised die cut that I've done. So let me show you how I made it. We're going to be working with really just some basic supplies. I'm working with a word die and then this tree die. Both of those are paper tray ink dies. Using three pieces of patterned paper. I want there to be good contrast between them um, because we're doing double inlay with that. And then I'm going to use this stamp set um, to finish the phrase. I've chosen three pieces of patterned paper from my mind's eye winter wonderland I think this is from last year but there were really great um, patterns in there they're the right scale for a project like this um, I'm also going to need a base card to put it on and then I am using this stampendous stamp I believe it's called Mega Mary um, love that big Mary stamp as well, but I'm going to use just the Christmas word from this particular stamp set this time. But I've pulled it out. It's an older stamp set, and I really um, want to use it more this year, so I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to start with this. It is a wood grain. I'm not sure if you can totally see it on, um, on the screen here, but it is a wood grain. And if you don't have... Um, if you're working with maybe a solid color, you might want to think about putting it through like an embossing folder or something. I'm using one that has a really subtle pattern on it, so I think that's going to work um, pretty well. But my plan is to put the cut the tree in the green polka dots, and you can see that I did that, and you do that twice. You cut the tree out. Make sure you put the tree where you actually want it on your um, solid color there and I'm putting that back in and before I do the next um, inlaying I'm going to see where I want this Mary to be and I'm going to work on doing my stamping first because I want it on both the tree and that background and it's going to be hard once we've done the lifted inlay of the word Mary so kind of Check it out, and, and then go ahead and do your stamping. And here's what I found. Use some temporary adhesive to put this in place. Again, this is a great project to do multiples of because you can kind of do assembly line on all of these. Um, go ahead and temporarily put the tree back in place. We want that to be exactly where it's going to be. I'm going to use my embossing buddy and add... Um, make sure that my stamp will be a good impression. I put it on my um, mouse pad there. I'm using Versamark ink. And I'm going to emboss this in white, but it's going to go across both the tree and that red wood grain background. And I'm actually going to take it apart to put the embossing powder on it and emboss it. And the reason for that is in the little cracks where um, between the tree and that background, embossing powder has a tendency to kind of stick. So um, I wanted to put those on separately. I'm just using a brush to brush away any of the, the extra. Um, what you saw there was a thumbprint. And thumbprint, because you have oils and things on your hand, you actually can, um, just by touching it, you end up getting a little bit of oil on there. It was a perfect thumbprint if I had wanted to actually emboss it. But just brush that away. Good reason to use your embossing buddy. And then um, go ahead and heat emboss them. So we're going to set up the second inlay. And you can see I'm using my magnetic plate. But I'm going to move it out of the way so the shine doesn't um, get to you. And you notice that even though I'm using the metallic plate, I am putting 
um, some kind of non-tacky um, washi tape on there to hold everything in place. So I went ahead and I cut the Mary out and obviously it cut out the tree and I need those little extra pieces but I also cut um, it out, the Mary out of the striped paper and out of playing card stock four or five times. It just is going to kind of depend on how you, how thick you want it to be. And I'm kind of thinking that I'm only going to use four of those, but it's particularly when we're doing something um, kind of assembly line, it's just easier to cut more. So I'm now adding some score tape, very sticky tape behind my base because I want it to really, really hold everything in place. Um, and it will actually give me good adhesion right around all of those little intricate cuts in the tree and the wort. So I'm going to put this onto my base card and now it's very very easy to add my um, inlay of the tree in and since I was using that really wide score tape there I didn't really need much of anything else, but if you need to fill in a couple of places with some liquid glue, you can do that. So we have that done. Now let's go ahead and build our raised wart. This is what I think really makes the card shine is it's this visual inlay, but then you know you've also got that almost like a chipboard that's inlaid. It's not quite as thick as, as maybe a chipboard board. And I'm doing this just by adding glue pen and matching it up and stacking them one on top of the other. So I'm going to, I'm going to end up using four of the plain white. And I actually cut these out of pretty thick cardstock, like 110 pound cardstock. It just, it takes fewer of them and it very quickly becomes a really um, stable base for me to put now my pattern paper up on top. And it's not super thick, it'll still go through the mail in a really um, easy way, but it does give you a really nice degree of pop on there. And now I'm going to come in really close. Um, you could probably plan a little better than I did, but it ended up not being all that hard. I just used my little quick stick to pick up the pieces and put them right back in place and I think that has such a huge visual impact to put them back in there. I've also cut a little flag that I'm going to put uh, on there and I did some stitching on it and originally I had planned to maybe heat emboss the, the number 25 but because I'm turning this into one of those assembly line kinds of cards, I decided I would just put a button because it's a lot quicker than adding an additional embossing step. So I'm going to add this onto the base. I always start lining up at the folded edge because it's easier to trim off anything um, over on the other, other sides. That fold always gets a little tricky for me. I'm putting just a three quarters inch punched circle from the same pattern as I used on the Mary and I kind of tried to match the angle that it was going at and then just used a little glue dot to put the, the um, button on. Now I, you know me, I, if it doesn't have a little shine on it I kind of think I'm, I'm not quite finished so I'm going to take a little bit of um, gel medium and just touch it on to the place. I found the gel medium actually is the best thing for keeping these um, these sequins in place. It go, it's pretty quick and it holds them really well. So I just added um, an odd number and again once you kind of get this one figured out over and over and over again you can do so many of them and yet they're each going to be unique and different. So I hope this is kind of giving you an idea of where you might want to get started. Um, know that I have gone back and I have put my Christmas um, projects from previous years into playlists if you're getting started on that. So feel free to go back and watch those. 
And as we move forward, I'm going to try and do maybe a couple of assembly line cards like this one, and then maybe one or two that, um, while we're not panicked about getting them all done, might be a little bit more over the top kind of things. Because you know I can't um, approach Christmas without doing at least one or two of those kinds of projects as well. I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me today. Um, I really, I do appreciate you all. You all have left me the sweetest comments lately and they really touch my heart so thank you for that if you're new to my channel please subscribe that's the best way to find out when I have made um, new tutorials and are uploading them here and be sure to follow me on Instagram Pinterest Facebook and Twitter because that's where I'm able to post what I am working on right now on Instagram I have a new hashtag that is OM on my desk right now and if you look for that hashtag you'll see what I'm up to. I hope you'll come back and join me again real soon. I have some fun things planned. In the meantime be sure and take some time for creative play. I'll see you soon.